Okay, okay no, very quickly, uh, you know, I, I, I play around with that, but what I kind of want to do is I want to get a picture of this, and this illustrates how you can use graphical reasoning. I'm going to graph 1 plus cosine theta, and I'm going to graph 1 minus cosine theta to the 3 halves between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, well, 1 plus cosine theta, if this is 1, cosine theta starts at 1, so we start at 2, and we come down here, and we come back up here. And that's a graph that you should be able to draw very quickly. And let's see, the graph of 1 minus cosine theta, and of course we've got to do the 3 halves power of that, but let's get 1 minus cosine theta. So here's 1 plus cosine theta, and 1 minus cosine theta is going to start down here, and go up to a maximum. and then come back down here. So here's 1 minus cosine theta. Now if I take the 3 halves power of that, it's just going to um, vertically stretch it progressively, uh, and it's going to come up to 2 to the 3 halves power, which is about 2.8. So. An approximate picture would be something like this, where this one comes up a little higher, um, but it starts out a little flatter, and it does something kind of like this. Maybe I'm exaggerating the flatness, something like this. Now, if I divide this by this, it's going to approach infinity here, it's going to approach infinity here, and they're both positive. So we're going to have a graph, getting a little fuzzy here, that's going to approach zero here, but it's going to be asymptotic here. So it's going to come down from an asymptote, it's going to flatten out and be zero, and then it's going to go back up to an asymptote. So the graph is going to look like this, and it's perfectly plausible. Number one, that that graph um, has infinite area, or as B approaches A, this graph has infinite area. Um, or as it's also plausible that it has finite area. Um, the fact that this thing stays flat longer than it gets sharp up here tells me that you know that it's going to. Uh, have quite a bit of space between here and the asymptote, so I tend to believe that it's going to be infinite, and of course it needs to be, um, but I'm not seeing that. Now if I do the factorization up here, uh, and I have prepared this, but I can write this as 1 plus the square root of cosine times 1 minus the square root of cosine. I'm running out of boiler room here, so I'm just kind of scratching this over. 1 minus the square of the square root of cosine. To the 3 halves power. And this becomes, of course, then 1 minus the square root of cosine times 1 plus the square root of cosine. raised to 3 halves power. So it's going to be this divided by, it's going to come out to be uh, just, well, it, it simplifies uh, to the square of 1 minus cosine quantity. Uh, this thing uh, times the 1 plus and so forth, and I don't have a lot of space to do that, but I think I want to play around with that too. So I can see graphically <coughs> how it's very plausible that these that this integral is going to approach infinity. And I can see from this um, why the, I can almost see from this why it's going to approach infinity. But I want to play around with it just a little more. I'm just having fun with this. <coughs>